Today we're going to work on the display, the LCD display of this E36 M3. As you can see, it's not showing all the digits and with a little tap or push, it comes back. And so that's just a poor contact. Sometimes when you zero this, as you see, it has intermittent contacts. So it's one of two problems. Either the LCD itself is not making good contacts uh, I'll show you when I open it up or it's the back side so we're gonna try to figure this out with this video uh, first things first I would say there is a way you could take the uh, cluster instrument cluster without taking the steering wheel off and several people have shown that on on videos it's um it's a little tedious I've tried it last time this is my second attempt at repairing uh, this LCD I would say it's easy enough to take this out and so do it and the safest way to do it is to undo the battery and uh, so that you don't get the error codes but I do have a reset so I could I did it last time without unplugging the battery and uh, I got of course the um, airbag error light and it took me a while to reset it so this time I'm gonna actually undo the battery but I recommend you first reduce the or uh, bring down the windows a little bit so that you don't have the issue of not being able to open the door if you undo the battery. So this is the time to do that and then we will uh, go from there. Okay, so I'm just gonna, it's a 13 millimeter uh, socket wrench here for that one and then just undo this. make sure it doesn't snap back on so put it somewhere far away and then I would say start by taking your T um, 15 torque wrench here and just undo this be careful not to scratch the screen there are two of them one here and one here and just unscrew them Okay, now I've removed both screws from here and all you need to do is just try to weave in an old credit card or some something flat enough but flexible to kind of give you a little clearance and you can just be a little gentle because some of these plastics actually with mine, it broke off a little bit. So once you just ease it off, the first time it's harder, but then now you can bring this forward. All right. And don't try to wiggle it out without, I mean, you could try to take it out by maneuvering the steering wheel left, right, left, right, if you have the engine on. But I would say it's easy enough to remove this. So I'm gonna take this off using a T27. The, the screws are right here in the back. You can feel them um, right there. And I would say it helps if you have the steering wheel turned a little bit, but I have enough play I can get in there with my torque uh, wrench. Okay, so they are right there. You could see it right there. And there's one on the other side. Okay, after removing the two screws, or so actually you don't remove them, you just unscrew them. Now, the tricky part is your turnaround, so it's likely that you'll be tightening them instead of unscrewing them. So make sure you pay attention to that, to the direction. Actually, <laughs> was loosening that one and tightening that one because I was turned around in my mind. So anyway, uh, this comes off fairly easily. Once you do that, just make sure you're gentle because there are some um, wires here and you're gonna undo these two. All right, and now you get to that main bolt of the steering wheel and that's actually probably if, if a 16 millimeter, I don't have a 16 millimeter, but you can use a 5 8 of an inch, which uh, is about, 15.875 millimeter which actually fits as long as it fits snugly it's a um, it good fit you can just see it here and it has it's long enough for me to access this so it's snug and you can use that all right so you're going to make sure you torque it to the right torque when you put it back it's about 46 um i believe foot pounds so you want to do that when you torque it back on but let's undo it it might take a little 
uh, maneuvering to do that, uh, you're going to have to have to hold this really tightly um, so it doesn't um, turn with you. Okay. Of course, once you loosen it, you can just work it out with your fingers. Just make sure it doesn't get dirty. Put it on a clean surface. And um, I suggest you stay careful with this bolt. It's a very important one and make sure it's clean. But also you'd want to mark the, um, I've already previously taken this off so you can see I've marked it. So with the, with the Sharpie, I just put right here between these two, uh, with a little bit of, um, between these two teeth, I put a Sharpie mark so I know to put the steering wheel exactly in that same location. You can make multiple marks if you prefer, but whatever you do, make sure you put it exactly the same way. Now, when you take off the steering wheel, you could see there's uh, the electrical um, connectors to this, the, they go on the slip ring. I didn't want to undo this um, because you probably would have to undo it from by removing this plastic. Since I'm not really working on the steering wheel, I'm just going to work on this. So as long as you free up the cluster, instruments cluster you can just put this in your lap and I thought about doing this without taking off the um, battery terminals and uh, just didn't want to uh, risk it again you know if that movement of the airbag results in an explosion it's not exactly oriented where I want it to explode so I would say it's best to be safe uh, just undo the battery uh, remember your radio code and then this thing will kind of come out easily but now you have to be careful there, there are connectors in the back so at some point you're going to give this little turn and start reaching for these clips in the back to be able to remove them they're a bit tricky and um, you have to feel your way through this and uh, it's kind of hard to show you but you, if you could do this with the steering wheel uh so here you could see that there are there's this black connector which I would start removing it. It's the easiest probably, and there's a little push thing here that you can push there. Yeah, just push that little. In the back of this is a. Oh yeah, there you go. So in the back of this, you see that little plastic here. Just push tightly, time it to put, push a little bit on it, and it will come off. And then when you get to this clip, all you have to do is just again push on the same kind of thing. In the back, there's, you know, you have to, hopefully you didn't cut your nails like I have before you do this job. It helps to have a little bit of, oh, uh, you're doing this with one hand. So push that and lift that white. There you go. And that releases this. And of course the last one is equally similar, but less challenging because that you get more clearance at that point. One of my light bulbs was burnt out, so I just uh, I just bought some spare ones. So if you're if you know you have to replace one of your light bulbs, um, make sure you have them because these these sometimes take a few days to come in. They're not as commonly available at auto stores as some of the other bulbs, but um, I'm missing the fog light here because I took it out as burnt. And now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, we're gonna use I believe T10 um, to remove the screws the the torque bolts here so there are five of them one here and um here 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 and here all right we'll do that ideally if you're check if you're replacing one of the bulbs you might want to check for the bulb's conductivity and make sure it's working All right, that's good. So it's conductive. That means the bulb's not burnt out. And I'm just gonna replace it right here. It's a pretty simple, uh, just a screw on. Um, it sits here like that. And then you just twist it in. Okay, it's just a... All right, and there you go. You can take it apart. Just be very careful when you do that. Again, when you 
put this, make sure you place it either on a towel or someplace that does not scratch it. Okay. All right, this is the LCD screen and I'm not sure whether the problem is from the contacts in here or from the back with the cold soldering. So we're gonna figure this out. And all right, the thing I'm noticing here is that when I push on this, there's a little bit of give in this area here. So I think that that might be the issue is that there's a piece of that plastic might have been that there is a little play here and there shouldn't be. So I'm gonna try to do something about that and try to um, put a spacer either behind this or try to do something here at the clip, um, which might be a little harder. So I think that this is the problem, but it could be, because when I tried to fix it last time, it got better and then I think it just gave, gave out. So I'm gonna try to play with this first before, otherwise I have to remove somehow the open that back side of this which either requires uh, chiseling through this cutting it out which will damage it permanently but you could glue it back on or i will have to uh, drill through some of these um you see those three holes here those three um yeah plastic um, i guess some sort of rivets that hold it together there's there's one here too and there are i think several of them and that might be a bit more than I'm willing to do right now. So let me let me try to do that. Uh, first, take the LCD screen apart again. So you might have noticed that I've tried to actually put a spacer here. So this spacer, um, it's just a little foamy thing that I stripped on, and I don't think it was enough. So that one, when you put this back on, it presses a little bit more on this. So if you take this apart, you can easily just just wiggle this out. This is the LCD screen. Uh, just be very careful with it. Don't scratch it. Um, sorry, I'm not focusing on it. There is a rubbery material here. This is called the zebra connector. And that sometimes gets uh, dirty and you can see that it's got this sort of alternating um, uh, conductors, insulators, conductors, insulators. So this makes all the connectors uh, it connects this to, again, place this on the surface that doesn't scratch. Be, be sure it stays clean. And there's this other part of the LCD uh, screen. I would say also just be very careful with that. Um, but then when you get to this side here, you'll see that these are, this is where the zebra connector makes connect connections. The bulbs are okay. My bulbs are fine. I'm just gonna try to clean this, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be easy, but um, certainly clean this as well with some alcohol and um, non-abrasive, but also non-lint-free um, sort of a cotton um, fabric material. Again, I'm not sure how much what I'm about to do is gonna help, but I'm I'm gonna try to work a little bit of um, some cleaning in here basically trying to uh, just give us a little scratch just to make sure that there's no loss of contact at some of them so just give it a little scratching just to give it some refresh slightly new surface and then use the air to to do that I'm gonna do this off camera but just give it a little shiny surface and try to clean those contacts and then clean this and then we'll see if that helps a little bit in addition to putting a uh, more spacer here to push this. I'm not sure if one, my plastic uh, indent here is um, has lost a part to it. It's also possible that this happened. So um, this could have also resulted in this problem. Of course, if none of these work, then it's definitely the soldering in the back, which is my last resort once I exhaust these um, uh, options. Again, I don't know how much this is helping, what I'm doing, but you might notice here that there's some plastic debris that I'm, that I'm generating as I etch through some of that plastic between them because I think that the higher 
separating plastic is causing this to uh, lose contact. So I'm just, it's possible that these metal pins have lost some surfacing uh, in, in the, throughout the, you know, old age of the unit. Again, it may still be the solder in the back, but this is easier to do. So I'm gonna do that first. All right, what I'm trying to do here is put a spacer here. I didn't like my first foam spacer. I think it gave way. I thought about using Teflon, but you could see Teflon started not working out very well. I mean, it is not a plumbing job, right? So, and then I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna use painter's tape and just fold it enough to give it some thickness, but not too much, just to push enough on that uh, LCD screen. And then I'm gonna cut it exactly the width of this, okay. All right, here's the idea to, to put a little height on this so the clips can clip on. Again, I don't know if this will work, we'll try it out. Okay, I, I was able to put a spacer, you could see here the blue um, remnants of that blue tape, uh, painter's tape. And here you notice I removed any potential play in this. So if I push on it, there's no play. Hopefully this fixes it. Now, if this doesn't fix it, then the problem is in the soldering and I would have to take this apart again, but I'm not gonna do it until I confirm that that's not, that this didn't fix it. So for now, I'm gonna put it back together and um, put back the wheel and try it out. All right, here's folks the result. Um, it seems to work okay, and um, this is not doing anything. And uh, the fog light, oh, there you go. When you do the, all right, good, wonderful. I think, and this doesn't do any, all right, success, thank you.